In this tutorial, we're going to explore the machine configuration guide where we can manage the machines we add to the software and the post processes associated to them. So if you're a brand new user when you install the software, you have been given the opportunity to run through the Kickstarter wizard and this guides you through the process of getting your software configured for use. If you're an existing user who's upgraded to a new version of the software, you would have been prompted to configure your machine after choosing to migrate your previous version over as part of that startup. In both scenarios, you have the opportunity to search for your machine configurations online, and if available, you'll be set up with the machine's associated post processes along with a set of default feeds and speeds appropriate for that configuration within your tool database to help you get up and running in no time. So now let's have a look at the machine configuration. So let's go to machine, machine configuration dialog. Now you'll notice that we're presented with two drop downs here because I've got the default machines that ship with the software, so the desktop and the large machines. So let's go through these, and these will be the same machines that are displayed in your tool database as the default ones that come with the software as well. So you can see we have the name, the manufacturer, the model, the controller, the width, height, and units of this machine, and the bottom section here we have the associated post processes. So in this case, for my desktop machine, I have four post processes, the G-code inch, metric, G-code arcs inch and G-code arcs metric on this configuration. And if I switch over to my large, so if we switch down to our large machine, you'll notice the difference is that the name is different and the width and the height is different. But in this case, we just so happen to have the same post processes. Now we're going to take a look at adding in our custom machines. We're going to come up to the top here and click this button to add a custom machine to the database and activate it. So let's click on that. And here you can see currently listed as a new machine, but we can change that. So at the moment, this is going to be the machine in my shop. So I'm going to call it shop machine. It's custom. In this case, model, I'm just going to call this one. My controller is G code. And my width is going to be 12, height of 24. And my units will be in inches. Now you can see at the moment, I don't have any associated post processes, so I need to add those in. And if I try and click OK now, you notice I get this warning and it says there's no associated post processes. The active machine does not have any associated post processes. Now the benefit of having post processes associated is that it allows you to default to the last used post processor per machine, better organize your post processes and give you more control over the version of the post processor that you use. And the software is asking if you would like to do this now or do this later. And if we did that later, the software would just fall back onto listing all the post processes from the database for you to search and choose. But we don't want to do that. We actually want to associate a post to uh, this machine to take advantage of the fact that we can uh, organize our posts and have control over the version of the post that we use. So let's do that now by using the now option. And you can see the controller I've got is G code. So I need a G code post or several G code posts. So how do we do that? We go over to this button here to select a post processor to associate with this machine. And we can scroll down this list, it's in alphabetical order, or we can just click on the list, type G on the keyboard, and it'll take us to the first post that starts with the letter G. So in this case, I've got my G code inch. I can select that. Notice down here, you can download the latest post processor database. So if your post processor database isn't up to date, you can update it this way. I'm happy with this database that I've got though. And you can also install a post processor or a custom uh, to a custom directory uh, down here with this option as well. But for the moment, I'm happy with the G-code inch post. I'm going to select that, and you'll notice we get a version over here. Now, the software will always use the latest version of that post, but you can revert to a previous version of that post if you would like to. Now, if you did want to use a previous version of this post, you can do, but note that you'll get this warning message which indicates it's not the latest version of that post. Now, if, and if you kept it set to the previous version of the post, then the software would not automatically give you the latest version of the post. Uh, on the selection list because you've currently got it set to use that specific one. Whereas if you change this to be the latest version, whenever there's an update to that post, the latest version will be the one that gets selected uh, when you have it in this list. Now, if you wanted to delete a post processor, you can come up to this icon here to remove the association between the selected post processor and the machine. Currently, I want to keep this one associated. And let's have a look at if we wanted to have a metric version of the post. So let's go back into our post processor list to select a post to be associated with that machine. I'll type G again on the keyboard and there's the millimeter version of that post processor as well. Now you notice to the right of it, we've actually got uh, an edit menu. And if you click on that, it gives you some options for change log, customize and view. And if you want to access a different way, you can right click on the post itself and you can access these menus as well. So you get the change log, customize and view. Let's look at the view for the moment. And you'll notice it opens up a window. 
Now this actually displays the contents of the post processor. You can see uh, the post contents here, so you can read that if you would like to and understand more about the post. But we'll close that for the moment and we'll right click again. We can go to change log, which has the changes uh, on the post written down or put to a log here. So you can see version one and when it was written and version two and any changes that were made to it and what those changes were. And that is there for some reassurance if you wanted to check uh, what this current post processor does. And then if you right click and go to customize, you'll notice it's created a version of the G-code post with a pen next to it. Now this is indicating that it's a custom post processor. This isn't actually the post that we'll be editing in terms of we haven't edited the actual current G-code millimeter post. It's actually created a copy of it, which is a custom post processor now that we can use to edit. And how do we edit it? Well, we can right click and we can click open file location. And that will open up the file location for our post. We can then right mouse click it, choose edit with uh, Notepad++ or any sort of text editor, and then we can edit this post processor and make any changes to it and then save it when we're ready to. But I'm not gonna make any changes for now. So I'm just gonna close this one out, close this window down, and we'll come back into our selection menu. It's also worth noting that the My Post P folder that's located in the application data folder is now reserved for these custom posts. So that handy pen graphic helps us to identify our custom post, but what if we wanted to delete one? So let's right mouse click it and we can choose delete. And then we get this message here telling me that this operation cannot be undone. Now, I haven't made any changes to that post in this case. So I'm gonna click on yes to delete it. Uh, but if you had made any changes, of course, you may not want to delete it, so you can click no. But in this case, I know I haven't made any changes, so I can delete that post. Now, if you did want to learn more about post processors, under the help option, you can check out the post processor editing guide and learn more about post processors. But back to our form here. So you can see in the bottom corner, there's the option for install post processor to custom post processor directory. So for example, if you'd written one yourself or given one from a manufacturer, which is not in our default Vectric post processor database, this is where you can install a post processor into the custom post P directory and make usable within the software. But let's go back to the original task of getting that metric post. So let's go G, G code, there's a millimeter post. We can click select and now it's been associated with our custom machine here ready for use. Now, if we have a look at some of the right click options in this menu, if I right click onto this post, you can see I've got make default, make default for laser, change log view and remove. So with view in this case, you can view the post again and with change log as before, any changes that are made to that post. Now, it's good to know here that when you view the post here, you'll be viewing the version that you've selected. So if you selected a previous version or an older version of the post, that is the one that will appear in the view window. Whereas when you go to the full post processor list where you go to select the post from uh, the list to be associated with the machine, so in this list, this will always show the latest version. So just keep that in mind if you're viewing it, uh, depending on which menu you're currently in. Now, you can see we also have the option to make defaults. So what that will do is if we click that, you'll notice our post is now bold, in bold text. That means it is now the default post processor for this machine. So when I go to save my tool pass, the first post, post processor it's gonna show me is this one because I've put it as the default one. So when I come to save my tool path, in the top of the list will be this post processor, but when I use the drop-down list for save tool path, this post will also be available, the millimeter version. It's just that I've set this one to be the default one that appears first on that list and will be the first choice when I go to save my tool path. And if we right click again and go to make default for laser, so that is where you have a post processor with laser commands within it. So if you have a laser setup and you have a post processor for it, you can make that one default for your laser operations. And then for remove, this is the same as clicking this trash can icon over here. This would remove the currently selected post processor from uh, this menu. But if you're happy with your changes, you can hit apply and you'll notice that changes the name up top here. So my, my shop machine has been applied. It is now a machine configuration I can select along with my desktop, my large and my machine and you can see how easy that was to set up. But I'm happy with my settings, so I'm gonna click OK, and we're gonna go over to the Toolpath menu now to look at the Tool Database. So let's open that up. So you can see in the top right here, my machine is uh, listed with my desktop and large machine, and this is now ready for me to start associating tools with my machine as well as with my material, so that's all ready to go. Similarly, if I just come out of this menu, 
go to the save toolpath menu you'll notice my machine is listed here with the g-code inch uh, post processor listed first because that is my default but as i mentioned earlier if we click this drop down we can still select the millimeter one it's just that this is our default one so that one appears first in our list but let's close that down for now let's go back up to our machine configuration menu and now what we're going to have a look at is an instance where perhaps we downloaded a machine package from our vnco account and we wanted to install that onto our workshop machine that doesn't have internet access so we can come up to this option here for install an offline machine package after downloading it from the Vetric website from your vnco account under the support section where you have the post processor section and we've got the generic desktop machine offline uh, configuration file so let's double click that or we can click it and click open and that's a Vetric installable package file and you'll notice it gives me a message say you're about to install machine configuration for desktop 12 by 24 and would you, would you like to continue yes i would and you'll notice it's now installed our machine configuration file so its name is the desktop 12 by 24 default generic manufacturer model desktop 12 by 24 controller g code width 12 height 24 units inches and we've got four post processors associated with that as well so let's click ok and then if we go into our save toolpaths you'll notice the machine is now listed here as well and we can choose the post processors that are listed for it and likewise if we go into our tool database menu you can see it is listed up here as well but crucially it has some tools already associated with it so it's come with with some pre-packaged tools that we can use which is really handy in terms of getting this up and running really quickly so let's okay out of that and now let's look at an instance where you have a machine that we could look at downloading the configurations for uh, so if you have a particular machine you can use the search online option uh, so let's go back into our form click the search online for your machine option and you'll notice it's now downloading an update to the post processor database to make sure that it's up to date and then we can select our manufacturer so you can see the different manufacturers we have here but for this example we're going to use a generic and then we're going to go for a series which can be a name or a number i'm going to go for large the model 48 by 96 and the configuration now in this case i'm going to choose default but you'll notice there is a rotary one as well so if you have rotary capabilities for your particular machine and you notice there's a rotary um, configuration down here you can check that to have the rotary post processors populated for your particular machine setup but i'm happy with the default so i'm going to click download and you'll see it's downloading that machine configuration and once it's done you'll see it says you're about to install a machine configuration for large 48 by 96 would you like to continue yes i would and then we get a message say that it successfully installed that machine configuration so you can see it's all listed here so the name the manufacturer the model the controller which is g-code the width and the height and then it's already pre-populated as some post processors based on uh, that machine information and if we click ok and go to our tool database again you'll notice that it's now displayed on the top here and we have some tools already associated with this machine which is really handy for us so we can get up and running as quick as possible let's have a look at some of the other options now in the machine menu because you'll notice we have covered the machine configuration but we've got other options in this menu so you can add a machine so you can directly click this to directly add a machine so you can go through the setup process here again if you need to so you can name it give the manufacturer model controller width height and then add your post manually if you want to uh, but for now i don't need that machine so i'm just going to close that out and just come out of this menu and then we'll go back up to machine you can install an offline package so that is where as we spoke about earlier you can take your uh, downloaded machine package from your vnco account and you can install it this way but i'm just going to click cancel go back up to machine you can search online for a machine which we just covered a minute or two ago so you can see how you can directly access that from this menu you can go to post processor management which will open up the post processor dialog and you can see this is where you can access all the posts that we have currently in the software and speaking of post processors you can install a post processor so if you click this a window will appear and if you've got any posts that you've downloaded or have saved to a safe location on your machine you can load them from this window and then finally we have the option to update the post processor database now this is where we can keep up to date with our post processor database so you can click this and it will download the latest update for the post processor database you can see it's uh, giving me a message here to say that my post processors are up to date so i am good to go and that 
covers our tutorial on how to use machine configuration and how to set up your machine. I hope you found it very useful and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.